Last week in our Sunday special report, we looked at the ways the chameleon priests of Elan took on the role of social workers as they became acclaimed for providing free health care. Join us in the third and final part of our special report as we look at the hospital they founded and see what it's become in the modern era. Today, St. Mary's Hospital has fully staffed its frontline positions with Taiwanese. And for the first time, its director is not a member of the clergy. Today, diseases like tuberculosis are a thing of the past, and the hospital has shifted its focus toward a new urgent need, caring for the elderly. Just as the chameleons have grown old, Taiwan as a society is also aging. Through their legacy, that is St. Mary's Hospital, this group of Catholic priests will long be a part of Taiwan's journey. Due to the work of surgeon Yanis Yanis and other medical staff, Luodong St. Mary's Hospital became renowned across Taiwan and the Catholic world, including in his native Slovenia. But Yanis eschewed every form of recognition offered to him, from awards for his contribution to medicine, to a request for an interview with Time magazine, to friends' requests that he be recommended for a Nobel Prize. His whole life, he never married. He wasn't a priest, he was a surgeon. But for the sake of his patients, he sacrificed all personal enjoyment. He lived in the hospital in a really small room with one bed and one desk. So in the course of daily life, he had no expenses. Even the salary that the hospital wanted to give him, he was unwilling to take. Later, the priest said that at the very least, he should accept a bit of pocket money. He took the money and gave it to his patients' families to buy medicine. He told us why he didn't want to get married. It was because if he married, there would be children making a fuss and throwing him off. He said, how can I operate or see my patients in that case? Yen is never married, and even when his mother passed away, he did not return home for the funeral. In the final year of his life, his body was racked by lung disease and other chronic illnesses, and his legs had become swollen from standing at length to perform surgeries. But even at that point, he remained on call 24 hours a day. In September 1990, at the age of 78, he performed his final surgery. He passed away in October 1990 at St. Mary's Hospital. When Oki was alive, he was recognized with Taiwan's Medical Contributions Award. Every time it was given to him, he refused to go to accept it. He never went. He would say that his contribution was insignificant and not worthy of praise. So the award was not conferred upon him until after his death. In October 1995, Five years after Yanis passed away, Father Ernesto Valdosolo also passed away. Up to the moment he took his last breath at the age of 83, he was still with friends of the church in Datong Township in Siji Village. This was the end of his life. He headed out to see a patient at one of our neighbor's homes who had taken a fall and gotten hurt. This was a churchgoer with a broken leg. Valdo Solo brought some things, some canned goods, flour, and rice to the home. He didn't quite make it there and fell along the way. He was halfway to the home when he died. He returned to God. We held a funeral and mass for him. There were lots of people. It was the first time I saw so many people at a funeral in northern Luodong, so many people. Outside, it was all indigenous people. Those who could make it did so because they were so moved by him. The chameleons are so selfless and giving. Of course we truly admire them greatly. If he asked us to do the same, to turn our backs on our village and head for Italy and go to do the same type of thing, to be honest, I probably could not do it. One after another, the foreign priests passed away. But their influence on the area around the Lanyang River persisted. The chameleons had come to Taiwan and built a hospital. They brought in medicine and equipment and trained many doctors who went on to open their own clinics. In the 1980s and 1990s, Luodong St. Mary's Hospital was among the three major regional hospitals that trained countless doctors for the community. These hospitals contributed to a 50% increase in Elan's health human resources. In the years following, St. Mary's Hospital kept pace with the times. 
In 2006, St. Mary's hired Taiwan's leading authority on pediatric cardiology, National Taiwan University Hospital Honorary Professor Liu Hongji, to be the hospital's eighth director. Parting with 54 years of tradition in St. Mary's, the hospital hired a director who was not from the clergy. Dr. Liu, who was a member of the Catholic Church, carried on the priest's spirit of selfless service as he led the hospital. In 2007, the hospital opened a medical building named after Dr. Oki. The new building was a substantial upgrade to the hospital's medical facilities and equipment. It had centers for acute illnesses as well as Elan's first hospice. Then in 2009, Dr. Liu handed the reins over to human rights advocate Dr. Chen Yongxing. Connect Kaohsiung to Luodong and you draw a diagonal line that cuts through Taiwan. My wife said, there are so many jobs waiting for you in Kaohsiung or Taipei. Why do you want to run off to Luodong? I said, it was because I was moved by these foreign priests. I said, these foreigners are all so devoted and now they're in a jam because the priests have all grown old. After Dr. Chen took the position, he set out to guide St. Mary's Hospital along a transformation. He aimed to shift the focus of its care from diseases such as tuberculosis and polio to the long-term care and treatment of elderly patients. By this time, the hospital had more than 600 beds and 100 doctors. The ranks of its frontline medical staff had now been fully filled by Taiwanese talent. It was because of that older generation, because of people like Oki. It was because of them that St. Mary's Hospital was able to expand and thrive. As the hospital was making arrangements for its new long-term care facilities, there was another death among the chameleons. In March 2010, after being bedridden for five years from a stroke, brother Marinello Renato passed away at the age of 88. In his 58 years living in Taiwan, Marinello had saved countless lives. Former patients from all over Taiwan came to Luodong for his funeral. We even had a patient from Kaohsiung come for the funeral. He said he absolutely had to be there to send Marinello off. There were some who were very old, 90 years old, and who still made it. We were so grateful that he had come to Taiwan to help us, and we missed him so much because he had grown old with us. Every time I'm up there on that mountain and I see that row of graves, the ones for the nuns, the priests, and the brothers, I really feel my tears well up. I wonder what great force, what religious force can be so great it can compel them to stay here in this place, to love this place perhaps more than they love Italy, and to devote more time to this place than to Italy. <laughs> I feel that Taiwan is my home because sometimes I go back and my family and friends will say, you've been there for 40 years already, don't go back, stay in Italy. But I tell them, every three years when I go back, I don't recognize the old people and I don't recognize the young people. I feel like a stranger. Taiwan is my home. In the annals of Elan County, the chapter of the chameleons is nearly at its end but their legacy and love for their adopted home will never be forgotten.